Hi guys, well here's another video and this one's a really good one on creating a photo book using Affinity Designer and Photo on the iPad. It's too easy. And not only easy, but it allows you to be anywhere. For road warriors, this is a real bonus. You can be creating your photo book as you're travelling, adding photos at night when you're sitting around with not a lot to do. Um, and by the time you get to the end of the trip, there's a photo record for you. School annuals, records, anything like that. Photo books are really useful things. Now, creating the interior template is where we start. There are any number of photo book ready-made templates available on sites like elementsinvato.com, which is where I sourced this template. Now, if you're familiar with QR codes, that little QR code will take you directly to the source, if you want to. Of course, you can make your own. But why reinvent the wheel? Now, in the bundle I used, downloaded and unpacked, this is what this bundle contains. Let's explore the files and see how we use them in Affinity Designer. You'll see there are a number of file types and there's a couple of directories there with A4 and US letter size files for um, the Adobe products. Now they don't open in Designer, but the PDF file does. And you need the PDF file. If there's no PDF in the package when you're looking through them, then you can't use the download. So be careful when you're looking through the site that they do say that they've got a PDF. As far as design is concerned, if there's no PDF, it's no good to you. If you're using Publisher, fine. But this article is about using Designer and we need the PDF file. I'll put the link in the description below to this exact um, to this exact template. So let's now load our file into Designer and have a look at the pages. Select the PDF file. This is where you're taking it from. You're adding a new file to Affinity Designer on the iPad. And that's your open screen. And you'll now be presented with the screen you see here for this particular one. Very nice. Keep in mind you have an even number of pages and it will make life a lot easier at printing time if you actually get it printed. Of course, these make fine PDF files you can distribute to family and so on. And yes, we have an even number of pages in this file. Now, the other thing to note here is that each page is a separate page. They're not two up pages or facing pages. You can't use those in Designer because you can't separate them. And when you try and print the PDF, you will end up with... Well, if it's, if it's going to a PDF that you're going to distribute, that's fine. But if you want to go to a printer like KDP, it won't, it won't be suitable. So you can solve a lot of this by simply making sure you've got a downloaded template that has individual artboard files. And they'll nearly always open as artboards. In fact, I don't think I've seen one that doesn't. But that's not a big that's not a big issue. Just keep in mind there are certain things to look for. Individual artboard pages numbered one through what have we got there? One through forty. And it's a PDF file. So let's carry on. Now the photos that you're going to use, if you're not taking them as you go and you're using your iPad, and you've got probably got Apple Photos, and I certainly have here, and any photo you take on your phone or, or transfer to Apple Photos will be available to everything. So any photos you've taken with your camera should be in Apple Photos. Just too convenient. I mean, why would you use anything else and go to all that trouble? Now this includes raw images, but let's not go there now. We're not worried about dealing with raw images. We're looking for images that you can put into your photo book. And I'm going to use this collection I took in Wales recently. Went on a trip to Wales to have a look around. Very interesting place. Very wet too, I might add, but very interesting. Now it's a good idea to sort the photos you want to use into an album. 
you don't want the 32,000 images view that comes up first. Um, so I've created a new album and called it Wales. Selected all the photos I want and when I'm ready to put them into a folder or an album, create the new album. And there it goes. Makes them really easy to find. When you're looking for the images to put into your photo book, just go to the Wales album and you're not ratting around through 32,000 odd photos. Now, we've got the file loaded and I've pinched out to enlarge page one. And you can see that in the layers panel, I've got it highlighted there and expanded. And the image is down towards the bottom there and the rest of it is text. Select the first page, the one you want to start with. Well, of course, if you're halfway through the book, select any page you like. The images in use in the template here are from Unsplash or Pixabay, I think. I'm not too sure where the original images come from. Expand layer one and place, replace the existing image. Have in mind the orientation of the image. Now, your images will be a different size. So just be careful with those. It doesn't matter if they overlap. You'll probably have to move it around a little bit and crop it, as it were, to get it to fit. Now, you'll see in the layer there that you've got the image and below it, there's a curve. Now, that's a mask because the bottom part, look in page one, the photo, and just below the photo is some text. That part of the image is, let's think of it as a mask. If you put your own image on top of that, it will cover everything. Now you want to slide it into that so that the mask takes effect and the image is trimmed suitably behind the page. We'll show you that in a moment again. So I'm now going to use images from my Apple Photos album, the album called Wales, and I'll start by making the cover image. I need a suitable image and I think I'll use this one. I love that sheep, very inquisitive. Locate the image and replace it. Modify and adjust the page text as required for layer one. Now you can see I've got that image there and it's sitting in the mask area quite nicely. Sometimes this can be a bit of a fiddle and if you're on an app on an iPad, you are definitely going to need an Apple Pencil. It's really difficult to do with your finger, especially if you've got really big fingers like mine. So, placing the images. Naturally, the image is a different size, but because I'm placing right on the previous layer image, I can adjust the location of the image for a best fit because I don't want to change the aspect ratio. And in this case, it's a pretty good fit. Remember, if you pull in from the corners and things like that, you'll change the aspect ratio and you can end up with some very skewed images in there. So be careful with that. I need to adjust the text on the cover next and the first image is, is now different, so the text needs to be changed. You will, of course, need to make your modifications on each page because the, you don't want the text that's in the template. Now let's look at the next page, page two. Again, we can place our own images here. The text shown is of course filler text and you can change that to suit your own editorial. Well, you'll have to actually, otherwise it'll read that lorem ipsum um, nonsense Latin that you get. This is purely to demonstrate how easy it is to complete a photo book on the road. The image is 8.3 inches by 9.4 inches, so it's not quite square. And again, mask it with the existing mask. And you can see in the layers panel there where they're sliding around a little bit. There's layer one, but there's layer two. And I've got the image positioned just below the mask. So the tesk. Uh, test, text, that's a tongue twister at this time of the day. So the text still shows up and the white banner across the bottom and top of the page. You can see the image is sitting behind that because you can see a faint purple outline of the bounding box. 
Now work with that till you get it right. And while I'm on the subject of bounding boxes, you can see this image, this is page three, the image is quite large then, goes right off across some other of, uh, of the artboards. But the part I want is behind the content list, or the index, if you like, of the entire book. Page three is simply repeating the progress, and so on, up to page 40. Now this is the index page, with all options editable from page numbers to images. And you can see on there the page numbers, there's little circle, grey circles there, and they've got the page numbers in them, and so on. You can adjust all that, obviously the page numbers, you don't want, your, your book will be different. Um, so don't forget to come back and adjust your index. It really is that straightforward. With the carefully selected image, the text remains readable. Now see, I've pinched out and enlarged that. And you can see that the content is a welcome after the sunset, mist of, ma of mountain, light of city, street of photography, and so on. Let's have a look at the next one. Now the summary, the export settings. You want to export this to a PDF. And it can be a little tricky. The area is the whole document. CMYK color space, you never know, you may be going to send it to KDP for printing. Now it's a PDF press ready. So this defaults to include bleed. You don't want the printer's marks because they'll show up everywhere. So it's just a standard export PDF. And your PDF is now ready for uploading to KDP or for loading into Apple Books or other readers. Apple Books takes your PDFs quite happily. So you can send the PDF to your friends and family and they can load it into books to read it if you like. You could even send it to one of the many flipbook generators that are web-based and quite reasonably priced and they'll create a flipbook for you. In other words, a book that's that paid, whose pages you can flip through. Very nice. Remove or add pages as you need in your book for a professional look to your work. Of course, this template's got 40 pages and you don't really, you may, you may not have 40 pages. You may have 10. So shorten it down. Don't forget to adjust your, your um, index in the front. And you can use it, as I mentioned, for school yearbooks, travel records, travel documents, travel documentaries, family albums, anything like that. Well, photo books, it's endless, isn't it? And that image there you can see is the, the um, exported PDF and the page is shown down the left-hand side. Easy. Now, I hope you found this really useful. And thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up in the YouTube panel and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it when you do. See you next video, folks. Enjoy.